Well, in the last episode of History Traveler, we were here on the, the coast of Guam talking about the American invasion of this American territory in July of 1944 to wrestle control of it back from the Japanese forces who had occupied it in December of 1941. Well, in that episode, we were focusing on the, the 3rd Marine Division at the northern landing beaches. We've shifted about seven miles to the south to the southern landing beaches, where on July 21st, just under 10,000 Marines would have come ashore right here where I am standing right now. And their objectives were going to be a little bit different than those of the men in the 3rd Marine Division. And also here, we get to see some Japanese defenses that really illustrate the lengths that they went to to protect these shores during World War II. Right now, I am on Egot Beach, and on July 21st of 1944, the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade, a force of just under 10,000 men, would have landed right here. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what in the heck is a 1st Provisional Marine Brigade? Didn't Haven't ever heard of that one before. Uh, the, the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade was kind of an ad hoc unit that was supposed to be temporary in nature. They were to fulfill a specific task uh, at a specific time and then be disbanded. So it's a non-permanent thing. And making up the 1st Provisional Marine Brigade uh, were the two Marine regiments of the 4th and the 22nd. And uh, they would be landing right here. So I'm standing at a spot called Gaon Point, or Gaon Point, um, and it forms, it comes out just in the middle of the uh, landing beach here in the south. So here to my left, uh, this would be landing beach white one and white two. And off to my right would be yellow one and yellow two. As with the northern landing beaches, the fact that the Americans were going to land here was no big surprise to the Japanese. This is a, a very uh, suitable area for an amphibious invasion. So the, the Japanese had a lot of coastal defenses that were prepared for the Americans. And one thing that they have here at this beach that they didn't necessarily have at the other are some examples. Uh, of, of those defenses. This is a, uh, a 20 centimeter coastal gun that the Japanese would have used during the invasion of Guam. And uh, of course it wouldn't have been out in the open uh, like this. They would have had some sort of camouflage netting or they would have had uh, you know a, a bunker emplacement that they would have put it in. Uh, but these were designed to try and, and take out the landing forces before they got to the beach. And uh, if, if my memory serves correctly, they found like around 20 of these all around the island. But that is a beastly looking weapon. Here's something that certainly was not in short supply here on Guam. And that is a 25 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. Uh, these things, from what I understand, were everywhere. Uh, so, American air power during World War II in both the European and the Pacific theater was uh, something to behold. And really, this, this was uh, about the best that they had by the time the, uh, the Battle of Guam rolled around. Uh, unfortunately, even though there were tons of these during the war, uh, afterwards, most of them, sadly, got turned into scrap, which is so sad because I would love to have one.
All right, I've, I've come around to the other side of Ga'an Point here, and uh, there, there's a Japanese bunker that, that I want to show up ahead. But also here, we have a couple of Japanese caves. And uh, you know me, I can't, I can't just walk by uh, a Japanese cave and it, not at least poke my head in. So uh, we're going to grab our light and, and just take a peek inside. All right, we uh, just popped out our light here. I'm gonna go back here and take a little bit of a look around. And uh, I would say that I'm gonna try not to bump my head, but it's too late. While I was getting out my light, man, I cracked it hard on the ceiling of this cave. But the ceiling is so stinking low. My guess is that this is not a natural cave. Or maybe it started off as one, and then the Japanese army came in and just hacked it out a little bit more. And man, it is suffocatingly humid back here. Like, I can't even describe how uncomfortable it is. We're not even that far in. It doesn't go back that far. But uh, as I've mentioned in other videos, ow, gosh. Well, maybe I will bump my head again. Uh, I, I can't imagine being a young Marine and having to go back and clear one of these caves. Just would have been awful. And they were all over here in the Mariana Islands. coming around this bend here, right out on Gaon Point, well, we've got ourselves a Japanese bunker. And uh, if we move around to the front, uh, you can see the port where the gun would have been aimed out of. So that would be covering the Yellow Beach area here. And uh, I saw a quote by one Marine that talked about how tough the fighting was here. Like this was a tough nut to crack. They were doing a full frontal assault and I, I think there were like a thousand casualties in, in the assault wave. And uh, one guy said that he, his, his company had 75 men go down in about the size, an area the size of a football field. And he said for every one man killed, there would be another two or three wounded. Uh, these bunkers were never taken from the front. Uh, they ended up, well, I think you can see some battle damage. So you can see where it looks like they took some hits from the Navy, uh, but they ended up being taken out from behind by tanks. All right, uh, we're gonna move down to, to the other end of Yellow Beach right now, because there are some things over there that I really wanna show that are super, super interesting. But before I do, you, you may have seen this structure here in some of the shots and thought, what in the heck is that? Well, uh, w during the time of the battle, just inland from the, the beach here, there would have been a coconut grove and uh, part of it got blasted to heck by the Navy. Uh, and then afterwards it was cleared. As the Americans were making their way to Guam, the Japanese sent the Chamorro people to concentration camps inland. Well, once the Americans liberated this area, a lot of stuff was uh, completely destroyed. So they ended up setting up a, a refugee camp right here. And uh, this was the latrine. Right, now, as we're making our way down Yellow Beach, uh, there, there's one thing that I really do need to talk about, and that's what the objectives of the 1st Provisional Mar Marine Brigade were. Uh, so one was just like the, the 3rd uh, Marine Division, and that is to get up into the high ground inland from the beach, which was not going to be an easy task. Uh, there was a, a veteran of Guadalcanal who said that the terrain here was worse than anything that he saw at Guadalcanal. And another big objective for these men was going to be to hook left 
and take this peninsula right here. This is called the Orope Peninsula. And there was an airfield there that was going to be vital to the success of the, the capture of Guam. And uh, this was not going to be an easy task. There were mangrove swamps that they had to go through. There were bonsai charges. Uh, they did eventually capture the peninsula uh, at, at great cost. Uh, and I think within a day, they had like torpedo bombers landing on the airstrip there and throughout the battle uh, marine fighter pilots were flying close air support missions right out of there all right got just a few more things to show All right, I've uh, moved over now to the far northern end of Yellow Beach, just north of Yellow One. And there's one other Japanese bunker that I wanted to show. Uh, one thing that the Japanese were really, really good at was, was camouflage with their bunkers. Take a look at this thing. Just <laughs> look at this bunker. So one thing that the Japanese did really, really well was integrate their bunkers into the surrounding environment. So this is built right into the, the rocks here on the, the side of this cliff. And they have a couple of eye slits where you can uh, observe out of. And then here is your gun port right here. But seriously, that would be hard to pick up if you were doing a reconnaissance mission out here. Uh, you're not. You're definitely not going to see it uh, with any aerial reconnaissance. Uh, that's not going to, to stick out at all. I mean, it, it integrates right into the surrounding environment. So yeah, this is one thing that the Japanese did well, and uh, this would have been covering the uh, north part of Yellow Beach. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the first assault waves with the first provisional Marine Brigade who landed here, it's pretty rough. Uh, they, they got hit really hard. So they ended up bringing in the 77th Infantry Division, which was in reserve. 77th Infantry Division, that's the, the Statue of Liberty Division. And uh, maybe that is a division that is unfamiliar to you just by name, but there was an individual who served in the 77th that you may be familiar with, uh, Desmond Doss. Uh, if you've ever watched the movie Hacksaw Ridge, uh, that is the story of Desmond Doss, who was a conscientious objector because of his religious beliefs and uh, went in as a medic. Now, in the movie, they paint Doss as like this fresh-faced soldier who has to go in and prove himself in Okinawa. In reality, by the time Okinawa rolled around, which is where uh, he performed actions that led to him being awarded the Medal of Honor, uh, by the time Okinawa rolled around, Desmond Doss was already Desmond Doss. But right here along this beach is where he is going to step foot into combat for the first time. He would be awarded a bronze star here for his actions uh, with a, a V device for valor. They would go to the Philippines. He would be awarded another bronze star there. And then in Okinawa is where he would perform actions that would lead to him receiving the Medal of Honor. But anyway, right here is where it all started for uh, Desmond Doss. But anyway, those are the invasion beaches here on Guam. And uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time uh, exploring around here and taking a look at some things here on the island and uh, seeing what else we can learn.